<laughs> Until summer of three years ago, my life was going perfect. I have three beautiful children, amazing husband, great job. We just bought our dream house. And the last thing I needed was my dream car. Of course, I've gotten this too. I remember driving this new car and just got overcome with emotions. Here I come from, you know, poor family, from communist Poland. And here I am. I never thought I would have it all. A week later, I found out that I have a cancer. It was quite an experience, to say at least. I was truly not that surprised. The cancer ran my family. My father died at 40 at brain cancer. My brother got a cancer at 40. And I figure out, here it is. It's time for me. Um, was I scared? Not really. I'm not sure if I fully, ex you know, I really accepted what was happening at the time. I just needed, I knew I had to take my surgery and see what's going to happen next. Surgery follow up two weeks later, went pretty good. The doctor, my surgeon came and I thought, so are we done? And he just looked at me, no, now you have to go to your cancer doctor because of course there it was some other issues. And he said, I will give you a phone call two weeks later and I will tell you, you know, what kind was it and what's happening. So he did call me home and he said I have stage 3-4. And I asked him, how many stages are they? He told me four. So I knew I was in trouble. Having th three small children, five-year-old and nine-year-old and 12-year-old, that was the hardest part. But... Um, after the surgery, they told us to wait several months and see how the disease would develop and see what's going to happen next. So we did wait. In the meantime, since I did not have family over here, and uh, except of course my husband and the children, um, when I did call to my family in Poland, they told me, please don't tell our mother, she will not be able to handle the news. So. Um, I really wasn't allowed to tell my mother what's really happening. It was incredibly hard. My sister Margaret encouraged me not to do it. Unfortunately, six months later, she found out she had a breast cancer, IBC. And even though I couldn't tell her about this, she was forced to tell my mother she has a cancer. So even though it was hard for me to deal being sick myself, the most important and the hardest things were my children and my sister. The only thing I could do, not to panic and, you know, obviously follow what the doctor says, is to turn to God. And that's what I did. And um, truly that saved me. I had an amazing episode one time when I was basically helping poor people. I've written the check to help uh, children, the poor children to support them. The woman on the Bible study came to me and she said, I have to tell you something. I am said, so, okay, what is it? And she said, I just have a message for you. You are healed. And she's taken off the bracelet from her hand and it says, Jesus, I trust in you. So the, from this point on, I knew I'm going to be fine. I wasn't scared anymore. And whatever's going to happen, it's going to be okay. On March, I had my IL-2 treatment. It, my cancer shrunk about 60%. Actually, I was so ignorant, I thought it didn't work because I suppose I thought it's going to be gone first time and then I had to repeat the treatment one more time and my cancer was gone. I feel incredibly lucky and blessed that I have an amazing care, amazing doctors, amazing nurses and Muffet and Tampa and I'm very grateful for what has happened to me. Certainly a life-changing experience. The only thing I would tell anyone who is actually diagnosed right now, yes, you can listen to other people's stories, but at the same time, you have to believe in yourself. If some people did not succeed, doesn't mean it will not happen to you. We are all unique individuals with all our weaknesses, weaknesses and strength, and anything can happen, and everyone can hope for a miracle. That's it. Speaking, would you like to say in Polish? I'm not to say now, they're separate. My husband would like to say something. Uh, my name is uh, James Thorner, and I'm Bata's husband, and uh, I guess caregiver, you'd call it. And uh, my advice would be to uh, not despair and uh, 
inform yourself of, of all the treatment options, but don't over inform yourself if that makes any sense. Sometimes when you uh, dig for too much uh, minutia and small information, you can get sidetracked and panicked and uh, start applying cases um, to your spouse that doesn't apply. She may be 40 years old and suffering from a disease that she can handle better than perhaps the case study of an 80-year-old showed, and it can send you into uh, unnecessary despair. So I would just say stay abreast of all the uh, what's going on, but don't overdo it because uh, information overload is um, not the best thing during treatment.